We're going to head to the voicemail of truth and reason. This one uh, about a hot topic, uh, the Browns quarterback. Hi, yeah, my name is Vernell, long-time Cleveland Browns fan. Listen, I, I, I just don't understand this, this whole Baker apologist thing that y'all do. At the end of the day, this whole thing with Baker is maddening. I mean, we're, we're sitting up here, we spend all this time on a quarterback that is a 60% passer, has only had one, one successful season as a quarterback with the Cleveland Browns, four years in, three losing seasons. If you take in the last season without the two wins Case Keenum gave us, he was sub 500 even worse. He was seven and what was he seven and eight as a quarter starting quarterback. He is who he is. Twenty eight twenty nine for his career. The he he only has he averages twenty two touchdown passes a year, fourteen interceptions. If y'all want to continue to keep going on this Baker Mayfield roller coaster ride like he's so great, he did not have a great season in twenty nineteen. He had an average season. We still did we make the playoffs? No, we didn't. So if he didn't, if we're not going to the playoffs, the guy's going to lose a three or four years he's been here. At some point, you've got to upgrade. You're going to keep riding around in a circle trying to get to a different point. We're not going to get there with Baker Mayfield as our quarterback. It doesn't matter who's in there. He's late on his read. He doesn't get the ball out when he needs to. He doesn't lead any of his passes. And you can keep blaming it on, on the wide receivers all you want to blame it on. Those are the same guys that everybody glorified when we had our playoff run in 2020. So did the receivers change or did the quarterback? Thank you for the call. We appreciate all of the voicemails. Let's welcome in Tim Bielek. Tim, again, it's not as simple as X. First of all, what's the upgrade to? What is the upgrade at quarterback? I agree. Quarterback play has to be better. Who's the upgrade? To me, the only up clear upgrades are, you know, trading for Aaron Rodgers, trading for Russell Wilson, and trading for Deshaun Watson. That's basically it. Nothing else seems, you know, perfectly crystal clear. And I've been, you know, I'm saying, I've been, you know, on record in the show before saying that if you're going to make the move to move on from Baker, you have to know for a fact, not a guess, a fact that the guy you're getting is better. I can't say that about Kirk Cousins. I can't say that about Jimmy Garoppolo. I can't say that about anybody but Rodgers, Wilson, and Watson. That's it as far as clear upgrades. And reg also, regardless of who you got, who you have there, you also got to improve the operation. You got to have receivers going to make the quarterback's life easier because, you know, this was one of the worst receiver groups in the NFL. A good quarterback can make them better, but you also want to give a good quarterback better weapons to really – you know, make things easier. I mean, Aaron Rodgers has had receiver issues in Green Bay outside of Devontae Adams. If he came to the Browns, it'd be a much worse receiving core than he had in Green Bay, for example. Russ Wilson, same thing. Deshaun Watson, same thing. I I mean, you have to, if you're going to move on from Baker, it's got to be for the right guy, no question about it. Otherwise, you're spinning your wheels and you're basically ending up in the same place that you've been for the past few years, maybe just a little bit better at the cost of extra assets. If you're going to spend those assets like the Rams did, you better be knowing for a fact you're going to have a great shot to bring home a Lombardi. The other thing that I would say about the receiving group, about it being the same, was it the same? Jarvis Landry was playing on one leg. Odell Beckham clearly didn't want to be there. Um, and then you get down to Donovan Peoples-Jones. He, he progressed from year one to year two, didn't make as big of a jump as people would have thought. Um, so in name... The receiving group was the same. In production, they weren't. Everybody thought Beckham was going to have a big year, I, I, myself included. He didn't. Jarvis Landry was playing on one and a half legs. He, he wasn't as good as he normally is. So if you don't see the problem with the receiving core, I don't think you're looking. I think you've got the Baker blinders on with that. Baker Mayfield was part of the problem. The receiving core was part of the problem, and I think the scheme was a little bit of the problem. Yeah, pretty much everything was kind of to blame in what happened last year. And I mean, even if you want to look deeper in the receiving core issues, Donovan Peoples-Jones, yes, he took a step forward, but it wasn't the step everybody expected him to take. It was kind of more of the after training camp. It was kind of more was expected before camp when, you know, he was going to take a modest step forward, maybe show that he had number two ability and maybe in 2022 or 23 could show be number one. Anthony Schwartz, I said from day one, this was a 2022 and beyond guy that you weren't going to be able to get much from him in 2021 outside the occasional deep balls, bubble screens, and jet sweeps. 
just because of how raw he was and him being injured in training camp didn't really help him much there.